I, I felt the Lord saying strong to let you know that He loves you. Don't allow the enemy to convince you any different. Praise God. There are big things coming in your life. Bear with me tonight. I'm using uh, technology tonight. <laughs> and you get to be the first crowd to try it out. <laughs> we always know we get some support for Greg. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, open up the book of Numbers. In the Old Testament. Genesis. Start there. Numbers and also the book of First John. Numbers 14. And verse 24. It says, But my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit. Now keep that in place we'll come back. In 1 John chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. Lord, I ask that your anointing would be upon your servant tonight, God. Lord, as I deliver this word of faith, God. Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts of your people tonight, God. And that, Lord, you would let this word come forth in clarity. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are about to embark on new territory. Amen. This church is about to move into greater dimensions than we have ever saw, seen before. Yes. Your lives, if you will, get behind this, are about to move into greater dimensions in the spirit that you have ever seen before. Yes. Greater things than you have ever realized before. In our pastor's meeting Tuesday, we meet myself, Pastor Larry, and our lead pastor, meet every Tuesday. And as we were meeting and we began to pray, the Spirit of the Lord came in, in a way like I cannot even explain to you. And God began to speak and say that this was a launching place, that greater things were coming. That because of our obedience, because of our faith, that he was going to do greater things. But each and every one here, you must attach your faith to it. You must attach your faith to the word of God in order for greater things in your life, in your family, and in your church to happen. We must understand that doubt and unbelief will keep us from walking into the promises God has for us. Yes, yes. There are some of us that continue to go around the same mountain day after day and year after year. That's not the way God intends it for your life. Right. He said if you have faith, you can speak to that mountain. And you can command that mountain to leave. Hallelujah. It's time that we begin to operate in the spirit of faith that God has called us to operate in. It's time that we begin to understand that we are anointed by God with power and yes. with all the might we need. Yes. And we are more than conquerors. Right. Yes. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Whatever is born of God. Whatever means each 
everyone and all. So each, everyone, all that are born of God. Yeah. To be born of God is simple. It means to be born again. It means to have a born again experience. Whatever, each, everyone, all that are born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. To overcome means to come off victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each and every single person that is born of God, that has been born again, that has been washed in the blood of Jesus, that has received Jesus as their Lord, I declare to you, you will come out victorious because you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And this is a victory that has overcome the world, even what? Our faith. Even our faith. So we see then that whatever is born of God, whoever, everyone, all that have been born again and have received Jesus as their Lord, overcomes, they come out victorious by their faith. My faith won't get you there. Your faith won't get me there. I've got to activate the faith in my own life. I've got to walk in the spirit of faith. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Now back to Numbers. Numbers 14, 24. Now here we have the story of the 12 spies that were sent to check out the promised land. The land that God had already said was theirs. Think about that for a minute. God has already said, you're healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. God has already said, you're healed. His word declares it. God has already said that you're free. Your word declares it. God had already told the children of Israel that the promised land belonged to them. That it was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a land that was plenteous. It was a good land. So the twelve spies go in. And they come back. And they say, oh indeed, it's a good land. God told the truth. But ten of them said there's no way. The obstacles are too big. The giants are in that land. The walls, there's fortified walls. Even though God said that belongs to us, there's no way. But Caleb, because he had a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully. That's important to note there. God said, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. He had a different spirit. When you look up that word spirit, you find it's a few different meanings. But one of the meanings of that word there in the Hebrew, in that context, is he had a prophetic spirit. Caleb had a spirit of faith to believe the prophetic word of God. He had a spirit of faith to believe that God said it. That settles it. How many times has a prophetic word been released over your life? And you knew it was the Lord. You felt the presence of God. It bore witness with your spirit. But you did not continue in faith. Therefore, before you walked through those doors, you left the word here. Church, we've got to remind ourselves. We've got to encourage ourselves in the Word. We've got to remind ourselves what God has spoken to us. Yes. See, there's times when I begin to doubt myself. And I said, wait a minute, Lord. You said, first of all, through your Word. And then, Lord, I remember that time when I was standing here at the altar. 
And, and, and Pastor Susan from Modesto laid her hands on me. And I ended up under those chairs. And the words were spoke to me that said, you will do great and mighty things for the kingdom. Today it begins. And I begin to say, Lord, today it begins. Today I'm going to encourage myself in your word. Today I'm going to rise up in faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to his name. Amen. We need to encourage ourselves. And fast is going to get me because I did not turn this on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to his name. So Caleb had a different spirit. He had a prophetic spirit. He had a spirit of faith to believe what the prophetic word of God said. On the return from the spy mission, ten spies had bad news. But not Caleb. In chapter 13, Caleb quieted the people before Moses. See, sometimes we got to quiet the people around us. Sometimes we got to not listen to what the people around us are saying. We've got to believe what God has said. We've got to quiet those that say you're not going to make it. We've got to quiet those that say, well, you don't look like you're healed. We've got to quiet the people. Amen. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. Hallelujah. He quieted the people and said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. I've come here tonight to tell you to stir up the faith within you and quiet all the noise around you and begin to say, I am well able to conquer the land that's put before me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to his name. Yeah. Caleb had a different spirit. He had a prophetic spirit. He had a spirit of faith. He did not have a spirit of fear. Fear will cripple you. Fear will stop you dead in your tracks. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. He did not have a spirit of doubt. He had a spirit of faith. He did not have a spirit. Listen, watch out. I might be coming down your road right now. He did not have a spirit of complaint. Come on. Wait a minute. I just went down my road. He did not have a spirit of complaint. He had a spirit of faith. He believed the prophetic word of God that already said, I have given you the land. So what happens when we have a spirit of faith? To believe that we are who God says we are. To believe that we can have what God says we can have. What happens to us? Well, let's look at Caleb. The first things that happen, there's four things that happen to us. When we walk in the spirit of faith. The first one is our perspective changes. We begin to see things a little bit differently. We don't see things the same way that everyone around us does. Perspective is the interrelation in which a subject or its parts are mentally viewed. In other words, we change our mindset. We see things through the eyes of God. We don't look at things through the natural eye. Caleb saw the same things that the other ten spies saw. But he saw it through the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Caleb saw the subject. The land in God's perspective as a possession belonging to God's people. Therefore, mentally, he had made up his mind and his perspective was different. So when we walk in the spirit of faith, we see things differently. Church, we need to begin to look at things differently. We need to put, let me tell you something. Take a trip to Haiti and fly back in to Miami and sit in the airport for six hours in your, but you're, you have a different perspective. You don't complain anymore. You look at things differently. Am I right? You look at things differently. Change your perspective. Look at yourself as a, look at yourself as a child of God. Quit looking at yourself as a failure. Quit looking at yourself as defeated. Yes. Look at yourself as a blood-bought child of God, hallelujah, yeah. who is yeah. well able to overcome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Glory to you, Lord. I told you I was going to stumble with this thing. And that's not a spirit of faith. <laughs> I might go back to my paper, so. <laughs> Having a spirit of faith will change our perspective and cause us to see through the eyes of God. Now, once, once our perspective changes, listen. When we are walking in the spirit of faith, our perspective will change. And then our position will change. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When our perspective changes, we no longer see ourselves in the same way. We no longer see the obstacles in the same way. Then we now move from a position of one being defeated to a position of one that's overcoming. We now move to a position of one that is well able to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Yeah, right. wow. Walk in the spirit of faith. Change your perspective and your position will change. Caleb was walking in the spirit of faith. Therefore, he stood in a position of faith. His position was one of a conqueror and an overcomer. Now listen, faith reasons from God to our difficulties. Caleb walked in the spirit of faith. So he reasons from what God said to the difficulties. He Spoke to the mountain. When we're walking in the spirit of faith, we can look at that sickness and say, by his stripes I'm healed. When we're walking in the spirit of faith, we can look at, at the struggles and the depression in our life and say, I don't have to be depressed because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our glory to God. Faith reasons from God to our difficulty. Unbelief reasons from our difficulties to God. Unbelief looks at the wall in front of us and says, God, I know you promised us this land. I know you gave us this land. But God, don't you see that wall in front of us? Did you see those giants over there, God? Ask yourself, am I reasoning from God to my difficulties, or am I reasoning from my difficulties to God? Hallelujah. Amen. Faith says, if God said the land is mine, it's mine. Amen. Unbelief says, look at the giants, there's no way. Faith says, if God said I'm healed, I'm healed. Unbelief says, God, I don't feel healed, so I must not be healed. Faith sees the victory. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith brings a good report. Doubt brings a bad report. Faith sees through the eyes of God. Doubt sees through the eyes of man. Church, it's time to stir up our faith. It's time to believe God for the impossible. He said, if you believe, all things are possible. Not some things, not a few things, but he said, if you believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. If you can only believe, if you can stand in faith. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith says, I'm born of God and am an overcomer. Doubt says, I have been overcome. Think about it. The spirit of faith will change your perspective to see through God's word. We will begin to look at the prophetic word of God differently. We will begin to look at our circumstances differently. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So faith will change our perspective, which will change your position. Listen, once your position changes, once you begin to see things differently, and you change your position to an overcomer, now God changes your possibilities. Amen. Your possibilities, when you are walking in the spirit of faith, the possibilities are endless. Hallelujah. God wants to use you in greater measures. God wants to pour out His Spirit in greater measures. God wants to move like you've never seen a move before. The possibility. 
possibilities are endless, child of God. Hallelujah. Begin to walk in the spirit of faith. Begin to look at things differently. Yes. Change your position and your possibilities are endless. Yes. Yes. possibilities were different than the other ten spies. Hallelujah. Because Caleb stayed in faith, because he had a different spirit, because he followed God fully, we must understand that it was not just the spirit of faith in him. He was obedient to God. He was obedient to the word of God. We will not Inherit the promises of God when we are walking in disobedience and rebellion. When we are not following God's word, we will not inherit the promised land. Hallelujah. It's the truth. He said, because my servant, my servant, My servant, Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring him in. Hallelujah. God said, I will bring him into the land and his descendants will inherit it. When you walk in the spirit of faith, your perspective is different. <laughs> Your position changes. Hallelujah. Your possibilities change. And once you're at this point, now your possessions change. Ah. Hallelujah. I felt that one. When we are walking in the spirit of faith, see, Caleb went into the promised land. Now it's worth noting here. That it didn't happen immediately. Matter of fact, he spent 40 years in the wilderness because of the, the jokers he was hanging around with there. <laughs> so there's a lesson there. Be careful who you're hanging around with because they can hold you back. The people we spend our time with can hold us back. Listen, if you're if you're spending all your time with somebody who is speaking death into your, your life and into your situations, you need to remove yourself. If you're spending all your time with people who are, who are complaining and talking about how they do this wrong and they do that wrong, if you're spending all your time with people who the only thing they can do is see what is wrong, it's time, oh, hallelujah, it's time to change the people you're hanging around with. Because they will hinder you and they will hold you back from being all that God's called you to be. They will keep you back from walking into the promised land. It is time that we look at who our associations are with. Bad company corrupts good characters, what the Word of God says. So what that means is, no matter how good you are, if you hang around sick people long enough, you're going to get sick. If you hang around doubting people long enough, you're going to doubt. If you hang around gossipers long enough, you're going to gossip. If you hang around people who do nothing but complain and point out all the things that are wrong, that's how you're going to be. And you're not going to inherit the promises of God. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. We must walk in the spirit of faith. We must, hallelujah, glory to God. We must look at things differently. We must change our perspective. We must understand that our position has to change. Hallelujah. It's time to quit saying. Hallelujah. It's time to quit speaking. Listen, it's time to quit speaking death into your own life. We are our worst enemies. We speak death into our own lives. You start calling yourself.
yourself a drug addict, an alcoholic, whatever it may be, an abuser, you will be a drug addict, alcoholic, abuser. That's why and I have nothing against the 12-step program with AA. They help a lot of people. But I'm here to tell you, I once was an alcoholic, but I've been set free. I'm not a recovering alcoholic. I've been set free. You can call it a disease and say it st sticks with me all my life, but I call you a liar, and I tell the devil no way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you walk in the spirit of faith, your perspective changes, your position changes, your possibilities change, and your possessions change. Hallelujah. Your possessions will be different. A child of God should not be walking around depressed. A child of God should not be walking around with a heavy load. I heard God speak Sunday morning by tongues and interpretation. And he said, I have broken the chains. Shake them off. Hallelujah.